Hello everybody, doing uh, oh Remy's doing some uh, yeah, that's right. trying the music again. I have, we have changed our internet provider, so now hopefully we have a much faster stream so we can handle a lot more workflow, so should we know, you know, drop frame rate and stuff, frame rate and stuff, so, alright, let's try that for uh, audio. So today we're going to be doing painting these bases. These are bases I've sculpted. And these are heroic versions of uh, the Demon World set I'm making. So the heroics are massive bases. They are great for like heroes, champions, like anybody special. So they're very tall and very ornate. There will also be like a the standard size bases coming out. I'll be doing those probably next week. But today we're just going to do these guys. These guys are massive and cool looking and lots of skulls and weird things happening so for the most part I'm gonna kinda of try and keep these simple these are like gonna be like mostly like rock in different colored shades of rock so like this is gonna be a very natural rock right here and then this is still a rock but I'm gonna kinda of, kind of give uh, I'm gonna be playing with a lot of like inks to make this kinda of look like a kind of little off and also got this dead corpse here or at least half a guy which I'll be painting with normal flesh tones. So I think I've got three corpses in total. I got this one, which the guy is reaching up. This guy who's just taking a dirt nap. And then this guy who is, I guess, looks like he's curled up with his puppy grub. Anyway. So let's start. So, okay, what should we start with first? Um, let's see now. So I'm going to do the skulls first, I guess. So the skulls are going to have the lightest kind of color uh, of stone. It's going to be, I'm going to start with uh, Crick's Bane Highlight. And I'm just going to lighten it up a bit. I'm probably going to add a bit of cream to it. Okay, so let's do it. And this is going to be a mouth white base. And then I'm also going to... Hmm? Music too quiet? Okay, I'm going to turn, yeah. turn the music to a little bit. Maybe that's a little better. Alright. And then we're going to do a little bit of uh, Moro white. So it's laid up the whole thing. Because the cream isn't particularly bright. So we're just going to lighten it a bit more. Okay, so this is the base coat for any of the skulls. So, okay. I don't have that many skulls, but for example this one. This one's got quite a bit of skull on it. Actually, let's, okay, let's go for a brighter. There we go. That'll mesh much better with the white primer. I don't want to go too dark on white primer. Or does it get streaky on your first coat? Alright. There we go. Okay. This is the uh, 40 mil heroic Demon World base. So it's like a mishmash of like organic rock that have like eyes and teeth and 
tongues coming out of it with natural rock formations and then it's like skull rock basically being like carved and basically sculpted by demons and other unearthly creatures to whatever they want it to be all right just gonna blow away the bubbles a bit if you make the paint a little too watery it gets a little bubbly so a little stiff blow on it will remove some of the uh Okay, it's got, it doesn't have a skull. Look at these these little tiny skulls. I want to paint actual like like a brownish cream color because they're actually like not rock. But these guys, it's got this weird skull thing. So I'm gonna paint the. Uh, it's got like a, a weird rock face, which is not a skull. So I'm gonna give its teeth a lighter color so it's a little different. I also got this massive tongue coming out of it, so I might make the tongue flesh colored. I don't know. I'll always work on the teeth right now. Okay. Um, same with this guy. He's got lots of teeth. Also, a massive tongue. Okay. I'm maybe a bit later on. I'll change up the brightness just because of the. Uh, how the uh, these are all primed white, so kind of I don't know exposure is a little off unless you do it too dark. So it's not so bright right now, but later on it'll change it so it looks a little better. But otherwise, it can't handle the white primer <sighs> at the very start. Okay, this guy's all skull, isn't he? There we go. Bit more of a white prime or white primer, <laughs> more white, definitely not white primer. Okay. We got some hands busting through the rock here, like tormented souls trying to escape. It's pretty fun to sculpt this. Okay. Then like the non-smooth rock, which is like these boulders, basically I'm gonna do a different color just to make it a little more interesting. Okay. Um, so let's see. It's a giant skull here. I think I'll just make this whole grub thing just one color. And I'll give it some uh, inks to change it up, make it interesting. Okay. That bubbles quite a bit if you have a little too watery, which I have, unfortunately. But a quick little blow will help with that. Break the water tension and cause them to burst. Because if a bubble dries, it doesn't look good. It makes a weird pity crater kind of thing. Which is not nice. I'm not going to worry too much about the overflow just because of that flesh. The corpse is going to be a, a, a pale color like the stone. Or the same kind of tone, I guess. Not the same hue though, but Okay. Anything else that's there you go. Obviously these two skulls here are gonna be skull colored. Okay. 
So let's see. So I think that's good for what color I want for the stone. There's no other skulls. Or similarly colored stuff. So I'll go back and just do a better coat. Make sure it's nice and solid. Okay. And then I'm gonna do a little <laughs> and then we're gonna do a bit of a, a little bit of a dry brush, just pick up some of the uh, the edges. Okay. Trying to finish up one color at a time before I go to the next stone. Okay. Next, we're going to do a little bit of dry brushing. It's going to be basically pure moral white, I think. And then we're going to do some two brush blending after that. Actually, I might be a little bit of pure moral white and uh, mouth white. Excuse me. Just to keep some cream color in. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, we're gonna try that. Uh, let's find a good dry brush. Let's see if this thing actually works. It's like a dollar store brush I was using for glue, but it might work for this. It might just be terrible. No, it's a little too, too crude. The bristles themselves are too thick. Um, okay, let's try here. See, this is also a very cheap synthetic brush I've had for a long time, so I'm just going to see if it's good enough for dry brushing, because I don't want to be too crude on these bases. I want to have a nice, subtle... Okay, let's try that. Let's do it in teeth. Oh, that's not too bad. All right, let's try that. Just gonna go along with the with the texture, really. So if any streak marks will kind of give it extra texture and definition, just a little bit. There, you go. I like that. Okay. So this is the moral white and mouth white base. Yeah, a bit of detail and help to find some of the cracks and stuff that I've added. I might need to go a little more white. It's not popping as much as I'd want it to be. Especially when this is going to be, uh, once I do some of the two brush blending to lose shade it, it's going to cause it to lose some of that brightness. So I want to have a, a bit more contrast. too wet there but it's fine. It's not a true dry brush, it's more of like a, a wet brush. Some people like to say. Okay. I think he's a little too wet, so let's go back to this guy. These little rock lumps. Pick up his face a bit. Give it a bit of texture too. It's a little streaky, which is fine. It's supposed to be a rock, so you get a little bit extra texture. Because most rock is not very smooth. But you can really paint it however you like it. Just preferably keep it in the same kind of uh, the brush strokes in the same direction. 
Otherwise, we can be going opposite directions or different directions. It looks kind of subtracts. It makes it look too busy. So you want to keep it in the same direction. All right. Let's work on this guy's teeth now. Just highlight some of those. He's, all right. And these skulls. Just trying to get all the, the raised areas to pop a bit more brighter before I, I shade it with my darker colors. I'm probably going to just go back with the. Uh, I think what's going I used um, Crixbane highlight. So I'm going to use straight Crixbane highlight instead of using Moral. Or math white. Okay, what else? Here we go. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's the last base to I need a highlight for this color. So I'm gonna go with this guy's kind of love handles. So it kind of all goes towards the center. So if there's any streaks, it kind of looks like stress points in the rock. Some things. That looks good. Alright, now I think this one's dried the most, so we're gonna take some straight Crixbane and see if I can blend that in. Blend it down. I'm actually going to use a bunch of mixing medium so I can add more to it and have more time playing with it. But when, it's, when I say a bunch, I mean very little. It changes the consistency of the paint a little too much, but also stretches out the pigments a bit. So it also causes the paint to cure or take longer to dry. So just be conscious of what all the things happen. I'm just gonna change. So almost if you put a little, much more water in it, the mix medium kind of turns into a wash, which is kind of what I want because I want to do all the recesses like this. I don't want to worry about too much about the blending. I just want to drown it in this paint, but still thick enough to blend. Just and I'm just going to do a little bit of finger painting here. Because the detail is pretty bold and thick, so I can just pretty much cheat use my fingers to just go like that. And remove some excess paint on the raised areas. all the little bell damage and cracks that I've added, so it's nice. Oh, I accidentally touched the model there with my fingers. Left little fingerprints. Don't want that. And I have to go back with that anyway. Do another layer. I'll just, we should be doing for almost all the paints. Go back into a second one. Alright. Here again, just blurp it on pretty hard and just finger paint it off. Nope. If you add too much to the you just use your brush and go back and just blend it a bit better. Okay. That 
deep recess one. I'm not going to remove any paint in my finger. It's kind of shadowed too much. I kind of want it darker than the rest. It gives it more depth. Okay. Okay. Basically, along the con do the contours, exaggerate some of the details that I've sculpted on these things, and just move some excess paint with my finger. very detailed area of the teeth. I'm just going to move most of the paint with my finger. But I will have to go back and smooth out some of the, sh the shading because the mixing medium kind of makes it a little chunky a little bit. It kind of pools not consistently, you might say, in some areas. You can kind of see it. You have little tiny darker areas around it, so I'm trying to make it thin so it doesn't do that. But that means I have to go back and darken it. Probably go back with just pure paint without any mixed medium. But it's good for the first initial light coat. There we go. More skulls for Whoever likes skulls. These skulls have jaws. So it's kind of fun sculpting all these skulls because it's a demon world, right? So they can be, no, don't also be human, right? Could be warped, twisted humans, could be like demon skulls, could be like alien skulls. So they're all a little different. They're not really anatomically correct for the most part. Just, all basic caricatures of skulls. So, just a little bit of finger dry brushing or painting to remove all the excess paint. in the crevices. Okay. I'll definitely need another layer of shading, but not bad for the first initial one. Because I'll have to pick out the eyes more and give them, make them darker. for this group of teeth and just do them all at once. There we go. Finger painted away. If you're doing any kind of finger paint like this, make sure you don't push too hard because you want to keep the paint in like the little crevices like that. There's a lot of paint on this guy, so or a lot of surface, so it's gonna require more paint. Okay. Start with the butt first, I guess. It's 
kind of hard to get into that crevice, so I'm just going to use my other brush. Expert finger painting right there for you guys. Okay. So with mix medium kind of spreads out the pigment a bit more, so it doesn't have as great coverage, but it kind of turns into almost like a wash, which is what I want for this. I want to do subtle shades, not extreme shades. You can see it kind of pools weirdly in some places, so make sure to go back and fix those. Or if you don't care about them, oops, you're, you're going to shade it with a darker color afterwards. But it's still kind of important to make sure there's no harsh edges, because that will still pop through your, your shades. Because the, the base luminosity of the areas <laughs> got a hard edge to it, right? Which is harder to seamlessly remove. Okay. Alright. Let's do a hardy base coat and then start removing. First coat, and I'm gonna go back with some straight Crixbane highlight without any mix medium, and just go back and touch up all the, uh, the darker areas. So let's do this one's actually not too bad. I'll just not leave that, not touch that one. But here, for example, I'll have better transitions along the edges. So I'm just gonna do a dollop of paint in the very bottom and kind of bring it, fan it up towards the top. Okay. Same this part right here. I'm just going to block it where I want it to go and then just fan it back up towards light area. Follow that guy's the contours of this guy. And maybe just go and remove some of it with my finger. I'm gonna block out all the eyes too, because they should be darker. I'm also gonna use a darker paint anyway. Exaggerate depth in the eyes with some darker paint. Yeah, there we go. Very skull like. Okay. So, for the darker color, I'm not going to use a wash. I'm just going to use basically this Crixbane highlight with like a black or a brown, maybe. Okay. Block of the eyes more. And also the the nose. And just make sure there's no not too many hard edges. I'm just gonna blur the borders kind of. Maybe. Okay. Same with this guy too. Okay. 
exaggerate some of the features to make it look more interesting. There we go. Ah, oh, it's Gribzilla here. So, let's just make sure the edges are all the nice clear border to it. And solid shade. A little too patchy, and then I'll go back over with a, a darker color. Crevices have a nice clear paint in them. Clear coat because you don't want crevices to have like a, a white primer showing through. It really like, stands out and makes it look ugly. Oh, there. That's the first shade. Now we're going to go for the second one. Um, do I want to give it a brown or a green? So I'm going to give it a green. So I'm going to take... Let's just give it olive. It's more neutral. Alright. So let's give it a bit of olive, which is Ortic Olive. And then some Crixbane Highlight. And then I'm going to add some black, which is Thumbwell Black. And it may be a little too dark. It's supposed to be lighter of the colors, so I'll just... There we go. It's fine when it's already... I'm going to start in the top part of the crevices and bring it down. For this part. I prefer to have the, the paint a little thinner for detailed areas. Okay. And then I'm just gonna single paint away some of that paint so the base color shows us through. Give it more contrast, which makes it a little more interesting. But you don't want to have too much contrast, or it makes it busy. Okay. Block out these eyes, because they should be dark. Same with the nose hole. He's got a hand coming through one of the eyes, so I'm painting that later. These rocks are going to be different right here. I'm doing the blue gray like the other more natural looking rocks. All right, that one's basically done. Here, I'm just going to go in the crevices and then just play around with them. And then any kind of overpainting, I'm just going to go and brush away with my fingers. And then just. A little thinner, it's a little too, too.
to six as part of that. All right. Okay. Are you guys liking the music? I'm trying the music again because our internet connection can handle this time because our old shitty provider was pretty terrible. So now we've changed to something new, which is apparently 10 times faster or more. So. Entertain a little better. Okay. Okay. I might go back over once I've done all the other rocks and pick out some of the very extreme highlights or even some of the cracks just to get a little more extreme but I don't want to do that right now because I want to see how all the other rocks turn out all the other tones and colors because I might be too busy if I do that so just playing the waiting game at this point Hard to see on my screen, but is the uh, is the exposure too little? I can probably increase it now since I've got some more paint on them. Not pure white. Just so let me know if you want me to change that up. Hard for me to tell on my screen. Cause it may look a little too dark and gray for you guys. Um, let's see now. How's that? Let's try this. By the white looks super bleached out, the white primer, but it's good for the painting right now. Okay. So, just continue on to the bigger skull. Just adds more depth to the eyes. Because I'm not particularly deep, so I'm just trying to exaggerate that. Give it some more fake depth. And uh, make sure your teeth have a nice border to them. Just finger paint some that away. And hopefully the pigment will still stay in the deeper recesses. There we go. That's my trick to painting for the most part. Even really high level commissions and, and uh, competition pieces, a little bit of finger painting goes a long way. Yeah. Just make sure your finger painting finger is not too dirty because it might transfer back on. I meant to, yeah, that, it's, it's got a bit of crack right there. I just have to define better once I've done more things to it. Okay. Almost done this part. Halfway.
I'm gonna go this direction just because it's gonna go keep it kind of like with the uh, the texture because all the folds are going towards the center so I'm gonna try and go like this and I'll find the folds and I'll kind of give it more texture the paint texture will kind of follow the the details right so it looks more natural because all the stress points are basically going into the center because how this grub thing is curved right A little bit over painting there. I'm just gonna kind of paint that away. A little too much, a little too much finger painting there. Sorry, maybe some of the paint I didn't want to be removed. Okay. I'm actually going to stop here and not do the skull until more of this guy dries because this is the majority of those bases actually this color so I don't want to mess up the, the edge of it right around here while I do the skull so I'm going to sit by and do the other ones. Okay. I'm going to follow the curvature of this again and just do a nice fanning motion. Turns out quite nice, that blend. And just fan it up. Exaggerating this bit of the curvature here. Just darkening that part. If you guys have any questions, just let me know. Happy to answer anything. I do love my finger painting. It works great for kind of like flat, blunt surfaces like this, which have rather heavy detail that are also like basically, it's not a model where it's like a lot of overlapping pieces, so it's also open so it's easy to access. Finger painting is great for that stuff. Um, I have to go back and do that eye again. I will make sure the teeth have a very heavy dark shadow where it's to the skull, so I'm just gonna go back over that and just brush it in and remove my finger. These teeth are normally very high contrast the shadows and stuff, so I'm gonna exaggerate that. Same with all the uh, nose holes and eye holes. Exaggerate the brow a bit too, just to give it, make it a little more interesting. 
Okay. Skulltastic? I'm gonna do a very thin layer for this one. I don't want it too heavy. Just want it more in the recesses, really. Just rub away any excess. back to this guy and do the skull. Mostly dried. So I'm just going to follow the curvature and do some teeth. Partially teeth. Give a nice happy smile. And block out the eye sockets a bit more. Maybe the, the brow. There we go. The skull unfortunately turned a bit muddy, so I have to go back and reclaim some of these areas with a lighter paint, but that's fine for now. Don't worry about that later when I do all the highlighting and stuff. Okay. That's, that was based off of a gorilla skull. This one. It's got a bit of a muzzle to it. Okay. So that's the the bone kind of like stone done. And then I ran out of space in my palette, so let's go to a different color now. I didn't do a good job cutting my metal parchment papers today. It's very really small. Alright, let's clean off my brushes. Make sure there's no pigment on them. Before I do the next color. Which is going to be a blue, I think. A bluish gray. This is a great coat gray. And this is not going to have any moral white or menoth white to it. This is not going to... I want to keep retain the blue kind of pigments. Oh, it's a little stuck. Just open it up a bit. I hope it doesn't explode. It did a bit. Alright. It's one of my favorite colors. It's Craig Gray. It's great for doing like leathers or stone. I don't know. I quite enjoy it. It's not exactly a not exactly like a, a very natural color, but it's, it's, it just looks very nice. You want to add a hint of blue somewhere. Otherwise, normally it would be very monochromic, like black leather, gray stone. Okay, so. So I'm going to do this gray blue stone for any kind of natural rock on these bases. So, like this guy, for example, and this part right here. But let's push those ones away for now, because I don't want to touch them just yet. So here we're going to add some more white, which is the pure white, and make a nice light gray. I think the blue is popping up more. A bit of overpainting on the guy's face, but that's fine. I'm not gonna ruin it. Must leave it. Air bubble. I'll destroy some of the detail. Don't do that. Okay. Since the stone is such like 
means it's got a lot of detail to it and it's very rough. I'm probably going to do a lot of washes. And I'll bring in all the detail. So, pull away the bubbles. Make sure all the crevices are a nice coat of paint. <laughs> the first base used up all of my light gray, so I'm going to get some more out. Most of the air bubbles will pop when they start drying, but don't risk it having like it dry as a bubble and left this weird crater. I was trying to blow them away. It's a, a firm little gust of wind will <laughs> get rid of pretty much all the bubbles. It's all the big ones that will cause the most damage. It happens when you're doing like a, like a very thin coat of like water down paint in a rather rough and textured area I find it happens the most. So <laughs> happens all the crevices basically. Just gotta be aware. So this is gonna be the more organic rock, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm only doing the uh, the more natural rock. With this blue grey stone. organic rocks and push those to the side and just do the rest of this natural rock. The organic fleshy kind of looking rock. I'm gonna basically do like a it's like a neutral gray and I'm gonna use a bunch of washes to give it some like unearthly tones like pinks and browns and purples and, and greens and whatnot. Just very subtle color shifts. Make it look a little more demonic and twisted. So, so do all the natural stuff first. I might even add some more washes into these other stones I've already done. They're kind of blended together, but I'll figure that out once I've gotten to that stage. But I'm leaving all the the inks till the end. I want to add them to everything basically. Help bring the base together. This is a pretty bright blue, so I might even just not even do a white dry brush. <laughs> hey, DC Cool. It's not really any mechanical bits in these things. They're all just uh, <laughs> fleshy, which is like the opposite of the uh, the ad mech guys. The Amnissa. Uh, Definitely no zeros and ones here. Thanks. These are the bases um, I sculpted myself and I'll be putting on my um, my storefront Rain City Hobbies to sell. 
So I'm just basically doing a, what do you call it again, a tutorial to how they paint these bases. Because a lot of people ask me how I paint my bases on my uh, my Rain Seal Hobbies page. I'm like, oh, I did these colors. They're like, oh, it's much easier to do with a tutorial. So that's what I'm doing this weekend. These are the heroic bases. These are like the, the huge, massive ones. Because like, you can see how like tall they are, right? Like, like three or four times the height of a base. So these are just for like troopers and or sorry, these are for like heroes and like sergeants and like all the guys you want to stand out. But the other demon world bases, I'm just do standard sets, are gonna be much smaller and less ornate. Good for like troopers and rank and file stuff. But I'm just doing the fancy ones first because these ones I cast first. Yeah. So here's a. Hey, thanks, D sequel. Alright, uh, so here's like a standard one. You can see how short it is, right? Compared to like, these are both 32s, and so standard trooper size, like Demon World base, and then here's the uh, heroic version. So massive scale size. So people you want to stand out, people you just want like to be your rank and file dudes. I'll be doing those guys probably next weekend. All the standard bases. Okay. He has nice little tongue sticking out. Plus, he's got like a few skulls here, which I'm gonna do like a yellowy color, and then he's got a goat skull too. So, it's like one of the last things to do. Okay. Any more organic stone? There we go. Or like, natural stone. Okay. So I think I want to keep this blue not very bright, so I'm not going to do any highlighting with, or dry brushing with white, because it's already way too bright compared to the other stone I've already done. So I want to kind of keep it the same kind of tones. So, but like any kind of like the weird, like, like for example, a hands popping out of here, like that, I'm gonna make it bright, very bright and make it look a little ghostly. So I make it maybe like a blue, like a like a vibrant blue white popping out of it, like a soul basically so okay and here's the last one with natural rock on it Oh, I'm running out of my paint. I, need, I just need a little bit more. Maybe I can stretch it. It's always the worst when you have like just the very end and you're running out of paint. Hopefully, I don't need any more. Okay. I think I got this though. Yeah, I got it. All right. All's well. So, let's see now. I mean, I missed a little bits in the recesses, but I'm not too worried about that because this is mostly me used washes to get rid of, to, sh to, to darken it. So, I'm not too worried. Okay. So, let's see. Take some of this gray coat gray bay and just get some more out. Add some mixing medium. And I might add a bit of brown just to make it a little less blue. Just to make it look a little more natural. So let's see now. I'm gonna add some umbral umber. It's like a bit of a purple kind of brown, so. Mostly brown, like a hint of purple or burgundy, I guess. Might be a bit too much brown, but let's find out. Let's do it on a small one, so I don't ruin a bigger one. Oh, that's not too bad. Let's try that. Oh, that's fine. I like that. It definitely numbs down all the blue. Okay. 
Let's finger paint some of that away. Kind of looks more natural this way anyway, because the brown would where all the dirt and in the crevices would collect, so be a bit more neutral colored and brown in those places anyway. Good for the first pass. Okay. Finger paint all the paint away that's not in the crevices. Let's go back and take a brush and do a thinner coat of the brown. Give it more of a shade. Give it more of a subtler shade. Just use like the heavy coat first, finger painted away, then go back with a, a thinner coat, and that really helps give a more natural shade look. Nice thick coat. And then just brush some of it away. Do a thin coat and just. Okay. I'm liking the color tones of the uh, the blue rock. Definitely lost a lot of its blue with the umber umber in there. It's always good to experiment, but it's great when the experiment turns out to be useful <laughs> and it works. Okay. Not bad for a first pass. Here. Okay. This is probably my favorite base right here. Just big old skulls. And the pointy rock.
sure there's no white primer sticking out in the middle. Oh, and don't overpaint. Like there or there. Oh. <laughs> I had some wet paint on my finger when I was brushing it away and got on the skull. Don't do that. on the bottom part. This is the part you really don't see, so I'm not going to care too much about it. I'm just going to make sure it's a little darker than the rest. Okay. Not too bad. Let's have it when it dries. Fortunately, the mixing medium kind of gives it a of a glossy look so it's harder to see once I've look much better once I've dulled it out with some dull coat. I use Tester's dull coat it's quite good. I use Tester's gloss and dull coat. Dull coat or gloss coat at first because it gives a nice hard finish which is like really protects the model and then the dull coat to get rid of all the gloss. Unfortunately you will lose your metallics so I like to go back over it a little bit with and just pick out the most extreme parts with like a very bright silver and it really helps it gives them a pop okay if you guys any questions just let me know and I'll be happy to answer them questions about painting or sculpting or basing too much pain in the mouth there. Mm. Yeah. The problem with the mixed meat, it's a little sweet. So it's kind of disturbing you put it in your mouth. So I don't advise it. But I am using P3, so it's very non-toxic. So I mean, don't ingest it, but if you do, it's not terrible if you do small amounts. All my paints are P3 except for like one or two metallics, which I really love. But I don't really use too much blending and put a paint brush in my mouth when I'm using those any metallics in general. Okay. Coming along pretty good. chunks do like a quarter or something and then finger brush it away so you don't want it to dry you ban somebody a lot. Uh, okay <laughs> good to know It's a face, but it's a little hard to tell. He's got like eyes there, 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 there. But once I finish up the rock a bit more, I actually paint in the red eyes. It'll look much better. More natchy, as they say in Adventure Time. Okay. The last rock.
Hello, Q Smash. How's it going? Today we're just be painting some of my bases that I sculpted. I'll be putting up my store, my Rain Sea Hobby store. So I'm just doing a tutorial, basically, on how to paint these guys. So if you have any questions, let me know about anything in general. Glad you're doing your day's doing not too bad. So this is basically dry. I'm just gonna go back over and just darken it a bit more. Just a little thin coat. I don't want too much contrast on this rock. Nice. Well, if you have any questions, feel free to say anything. Anything about hobbying, painting, building, whatever you want. What are you working on right now? Q Smash? You doing you doing like, like hobby stuff? You doing like stuff for like Warhammer or like any kind of game? Okay. Uh, that's mostly dry. I'll work on that a bit more. <laughs> um, a lot of people recommend high quality brushes. I these brushes I've been using. For many years, or like cheap, like two, three dollar brushes, um, as long as the tip is good, they'll last a while. And I, I paint every day, basically. So like, as long as you know how to take care of your brushes, they'll, they'll last quite a few months. Especially if you're not painting every day. And so these are all synthetic, cheap brushes. Like, oh, just oh but I, I do buy them from like an actual art store, not like dollar store brushes. So like, for example, this one is like a Dynasty brush. This is Dynasty 4. Also, the other ones I like is um, Nobel. The 4s and 2s are a great size. Um, but just make sure you gotta clean them every time and make sure the, like this one's a very old brush that I've just used for dry brush and base coating. So make sure the paint doesn't get to the, the, uh, the metal part. They keep falling out. I've never actually had that happen. Like, uh, make sure you're not leaving your paint in the water. Just like when you when you're cleaning it out, let it don't let it sit. Otherwise, the water will basically uh, get into like the sh the shaft, the handle part, and it'll basically expand, right? And so it could cause like the metal to expand, and this will cause like this parts to like, because I guess it's, the metal part expands and there's not a. I guess forced to keep the bristles in. Oh, <laughs> those um, those might be a little too cheap, but like I don't recommend like if you're just, especially if you're just starting out. I don't don't recommend buying like a twenty dollar brush. That's very unnecessary, and like you don't need for real animal fur, for example. Like synthetic works just as good, and better for the environment. Like 80 brushes in a set, or a set of brushes that cost 80 bucks. Either way, I don't recommend that. Because, <laughs> like. Oh, that's a. Uh... Yeah, I don't, I don't recommend that, especially when you're just starting out. Like, because you, most times, it's just like a, <laughs> it's vastly unnecessary. Because, like, I'm doing just fine with these. Like, this brush thing cost $4 because it's a bigger size than my normal one. It's a 4 size. So, and, like, it works just fine. It really depends how long you, like, or how, how abusive you are with it. I'm pretty abusive with my brushes and, like, it's the last months. So, I mean. But, like, if you use, um, like, after, like, a long session, you use, like, a conditioner. I forget what conditioner I have, but basically just, like, Masters. what? Master's brush soap. Master's brush soap. And basically just like, so when, when I clean my brush, um, I like to take 
basically I get the brush soapy and then get it really wet. And when I'm cleaning it, I basically like this and just roll it like this against my hand. And just go like this basically. And you're basically forcing the bristles to rub against each other, but you're not like forcing the brush to go like this, right? Because this is not what you want. You want to like a short angle like this. And I'll take like like three or four brushes and just get them wet and go like this and just go like that. And I'll rub like this and it just like it'll clean all of them pretty good. You can see like this one is like one of my newer ones and it's quite fine. And it's got a good tip to it. And these are my older ones where you see the, the paint is a little bit uh, got it in there. You don't want that because like the bristles will start going like this, start separating. You can see this guy has none of that and he's like a very fine tip. And these ones are like just like their tip's not very good at all. Plus these one, this one's like this one's like six months old, this one right here. But it's still good. It's still good for like base coating, right? But for like this one, this is a number four brush. It cost me three or four bucks from like the art store, and I can do, I'll do face details with this thing, eyeballs, whatever. This is about a month old. It's got a little bit of a hook right now, which I don't mind. I the hook's fine. It's got to change the angle the way you do it, but that's totally fine. Also, whenever you're done with a brush, I like to go like this, put it in your mouth, and then twist it. And the spiral will help maintain the tip. Like that, and then, so the, the, the hook's a little less evident when you need to give it a spiral, but it helps to maintain the whole, like, sharpness of the tip. I do it with pretty much any brush. And yeah, the Master's Brush Soap it comes in like a little little pot, I guess, maybe like two inches wide and about two inches tall. It's just, it's like, I think it's like eight bucks or so, and it, uh, mine's been about, I've used it for about two or three years now. It's almost done, but yeah. And probably just use it after like a session of painting. Because um, once you've been painting for a while, you're, you're like you're, your water will get milky, you get dirty, whatever, and so the whole brush gets a little coat of uh, of pigment and it starts to build up. And so the, what the um, the soap will do is hopefully remove most of it, if not all of it, because once the pigments cure onto the brush, into the bristles, other pigment, other um, paints will basically cure onto it easier and better, and so you want to delay that as much as possible. Yeah. As I was talking, I actually left some paint on this tip of this brush to dry, and now it's, well, <laughs> as you can see here, you don't want this either. This is probably permanent, but I don't care. This brush is a year old or so, so I'm not too worried. Okay, what was I doing again? I think I was touching up the, uh, this part. I go to, I go to, um, I go to Desserts. Opus is another, basically, I think, more international one, I think. Because um, it's, it's, uh, I find, like, if you go to, like, a, a hobby store, like, for example, that sells, like, miniatures, like, like, War Machine or Warhammer or stuff like that, they have, like, the Games Workshop brand, and those are normally very overpriced for what you want, and you get basically the same quality for half the price or even less at like a more generic store. But if you want to support your, your game store, then yeah, not a bad spot to get it. But I, I paint a lot and I go through a lot of brushes, so. I do recommend basic anything from uh, Private Press. They're a good company, and great products, and their paints are fantastic. And they're also American. If you guys care about that kind of stuff. I'm a Canadian, but I live really close to the uh, headquarters of. Uh, Private press, so I go down once in a while for their their conventions. It's quite.
quite nice. Uh, Private Your Press. They have uh, their painting and hobby stuff is called P3 basically because it's Private Your Press painting or P3 for short. So check them out. Like, where are you located actually? Are you in like Europe or uh, North America? Q, uh, Q Smash. New York? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So I think Private Your Press or GG Games Workshop be your best bet. But like I said, if you want cheaper brushes of the same quality, try out like Opus or some kind of like more generic. Dick Blick. Hmm? Dick Blick, the simple one. Dick Blick? It's quite the name. Apparently that's also another good uh, supply art supply store. stone to be too high contrast and maybe a bit too contrasty right here but I guess it's fine for now okay let's see how's it looking so far coming together a bit um, let's see I might darken some I don't know let's find out okay, let's do the organic stone now before I mix anything else up. Okay, so the organic stone is going to be... I don't know what it's going to be. I might have another gray around here. I guess I'll just make my own gray up too. Uh, let's just do... Thamar Black and Moral White. So why not? very neutral it's like no color at all no hues just straight black and white which is good because I'm adding a bunch of washes to this to these rocks okay there we go very neutral I think it might have a hint of I don't know it might have a hint of something I think there's a bit of a hint of blue to it, but definitely not as much as that gray coat gray. Okay, let's just push this away. Whenever I do basement like this, I always flick a bunch of paint everywhere, so I don't want to sp spray my other bases with this. Okay. So this is like the, uh, the twisty organic looking stone, which is kind of like sculpted by demons and stuff like that. Got little eyeballs and fleshy parts and mouths and tongues in it. So I want to kind of paint it like a gray stone. Then I'm also going to add some uh, some like washes and stuff to make it look unearthly and you know creepy. But it still has cracks and stuff that make it look like it's stone, like a weird twisted sculpture, for example. Like a demon got bored and made some kind of weird monument to itself. Okay. Yeah, this is a uh, P3. I pretty much all my paints I use are P3 because it's non-toxic, and as you can see, for the most part, I <laughs> I uh, I paint like my brushes, so I get the paint in my mouth and I ingest it sometimes. 
But P3 is good because it's guaranteed non-toxic and they're one of the higher quality paints. They get their paints from uh, some like, very high quality supplier in the UK, which basically does like space shuttle paints and enamels and stuff like that. So very exact paints. They're very thin, but high pigment count. So they um, they work great. And even when they're thinned out too. But um, the trick is if you're doing like a white undercoat to do a thin bright coat. Because if you do a dark coat over a light base, it looks streaky. And if you try and do like a, a light coat over dark, it will look streaky as well. So you want to kind of mix the light with the light. So I'm doing a light gray over a white primer. So I can go on quite smooth. It also works great for if you do white primer. Do it for a... Uh, like yellows and reds, people have problems with those kind of colors. It's one coat basically for the most part of red or yellow and white, and it'll look great. Okay, there's no organic in that. Okay. I'm gonna leave all the skulls and dead bodies till the very last after I've done all the stone. This will be much easier that way. I'm gonna be pretty uh, aggressive with the washes, I think. Right. <laughs> Just gonna blow away all the bubbles. If you add too much water, sometimes it gets bubbly, especially when you're painting in cracks and areas. These bases, um, so these are actually bases that I sculpt and cast myself. Um, so I basically these are for my other um, hobby, which is <laughs> selling bases and hobby supplies to people via my store or in-city hobbies. So this is basically for a tutorial for people, because people always ask me, like, oh, how did you paint your bases, etc., etc. So now I can show people. Okay. So these are not on sale yet, but these on sale in, in a week or two. So these are the heroic versions of these. So like, these are like massive, these are tall, these are great for like, if you're doing like War Machine or, or 40k, for example, like all like the, the unit leaders or like commanders, officers, whatever, like they're massive, they're big. And then this is a, this is a master of the small types, like the standard one, so I can see it's, it's quite thin. It's not too ornate, but it's still got some quite good details. So like, so these are both 32 mil bases and this is the, this is the heroic and this is the standard one. So you can see it's like half the height. But I still haven't cast these ones yet. That's next week I'm going to be casting them, painting them. Okay. So. Okay. I need some more uh, gray. Thanks, Q-Smash. Okay. Gotta make sure this gray is the same kind of color. Is this? Yeah, it's about the same. I pretty much mix all my paints, so I gotta make sure they're not in different tones. I was gonna make sure I paint on the camera. I was a habit of like, wandering off. Let me just get my water in a better position. There we go. I think I got my paint a little too thin here, so it gets a little streaky, but it's not too bad. I just want to paint the pool in like the details, like the fingers, for example, in this guy. you'll destroy the detail and, and the fingers will go like just soft muddy detail like features basically you don't want that you want nice sharp details this one's basically like a weird organic like twist like a sculpture but it's got souls trapped in it so it's got these always hands bursting out 
It's pretty hard to see right now, but once I get the uh, the rock, then I can start painting the hands. That'll look cool. Well, I'll probably have to get to the, start doing all the details tomorrow, unfortunately. I'll be running out of time. Okay. Oh, I have a good one. Thanks for visiting. Alright, maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good evening, Q Smash. A little too much paint on my hands. I can start transferring over to the models. Be careful, I'll have to wash my hands, you know, I think. Because the paint will start to bond to the other paint from my hands to the model. And you'll have this weird, like, fingerprint of, like, white paint on the model. It won't look good. You can see here it's got like a teeth and the tongue popping out of there and stuff like that. Some creepy. Silly. Uh, here we go. This is like a giant jaw with a weird like statue or something like that. It has tongue and his teeth sticking out. And a big old cleft lip. Or cleft uh, jaw. Cleft chin. Cleft something, I just say that. I know that I'm painting the jaw and the uh, tongue the same color, but once I add the washes, I'll make the tongue a little more pink. I'll make it stand out more. So there's no organic bits on those ones, I'm just going to move the faces out of the way. Push this out. I'll also go back and give these guys a better coat in some parts. It's a little streaky in some of them. Gotta be vigilant for that kind of stuff. Because these are the, uh, the bases I'm going to put on my website for like, the display pictures, so I'll make them look nice. Slowly painting off camera. Okay. Let's go back to the first one and do a thin coat and just make sure it's nice and solid. Also make sure you're not leaving any bubbles. If you're doing it this fast, you might leave bubbles. Like I'm leaving a lot of bubbles. Because of the water is quite or the paint's quite thin. And the bubbles form on the cracks, so you get a little bit of a blow, and it, they mostly go away. There we go. Good enough. Alright. Next one. And we'll do a bit of a dry brush afterwards, too. to help exaggerate some of the details. Because I think I made this a little too dark. So I want to brighten it up a bit. Just in the most raised areas. You can see the guy a bit better now. The guy is trying to... You know, halfway made up this rock plateau, but then he got cut off a bit. You can see his spine hanging out a bit. He was fun to sculpt. I did that one. This one is mostly dry. Let's finish up that base coat. So I'm doing a rather thin and watered down coat. 
for my second one. And mainly just on the the most the, uh, the uh, most raised area. It's kind of looks like a dry brush bit, but very thin and wet. So I just need the the most raised areas to have a nice solid coat because it pooled in the other places. So it, any kind of recessed areas it pooled a bit, so it's very solid there. But making sure all the raised areas which would pool away from have a good solid coat. It's a bit streaky right here, so. Do a thin coat. It's almost like a dry brush. There we go. Can I see a bit of the hands popping out the stone? Okay. Just make sure your the base coat's very dry before you do this. You'll have weird pools of like the primer popping out if you don't let it dry first. Okay. Okay. Anything else I missed? Oh yeah, this guy. Unfortunately, it's I know it's, it's for the most part it's pretty much dry. I'm just gonna not go in the recesses. Take some more more white and just do a bit of a like a wet dry brush. And then I'll shade it again. Okay, take some more white here and just brighten up this gray. So, like I said before, I'm doing a very neutral for this organic looking rock just because I'm gonna add a bunch of washes to give it like greens and purples and blues and make it look warped and twisted and not look natural. Alright. Just get a small amount of paint onto my brush and then just see if this works. Just gonna brighten up areas. And see me licking my tongue because my saliva is a great mixing medium. So that's why I like using private press because they're not like non toxic. So I can use my tongue whenever I want to add some a nice medium to that. It really helps. It thins it out, but not like in a bad way. It doesn't make it chunky. It kind of very cons. Whoops! <laughs> Did the whole whole part there off camera. Sorry about that. Okay, let's do a dry one. Ah, you can see here it's it's quite a thin, but it's also consistent, right? It doesn't like go in like patchiness, which a lot of thinners do. I find so. I'm brushing to where the, the silhouette is because it's kind of got the ribbing on it, so I'm trying to follow that when I do my highlighting. But it also does pool a bit, so you'll see it pool in some crevices. So be careful of that. You don't want the light colors to pool in recesses. ruin your depth of shadow basically if you do that <laughs> I gotta stop painting off camera all right I'll do another coat for that camera. good enough for now okay nice thin coat oh my god I'm painting off camera because the, my current camera is kind of blocking my way, so it's a little harder to see. So I naturally to go like this, where it's like easier to see, but not visible for you guys. Sorry about that. 
I just have to suffer through it, I guess. dry brush along the texture, the stress marks of the, uh, the model itself it has a bit of folds that go into it, like along this direction. So I'm kind of, if there's any kind of like brush marks is going to go with that. Hey, cool. How's it going, Biffas? Sorry, I could mispronounce your name. Biffas? Biffus? How, what are you painting? I'm doing these uh, bases that I sculpted myself, and I'm going to be selling on my own web store, Rain City Hobbies. So I'm basically just doing a tutorial. Because a lot of people ask me, how do you paint your bases? And now I can finally show them how, step by step. Okay. I go. Cool. All right. Well, thank you for uh, talking to me. It's nice to have somebody to talk to. It gets a little lonely when nobody wants to talk. Okay. So this, this first coat, it's gonna need a second one. But I'm just trying to bring out all the raised areas. Let's exaggerate some of the the details in the silhouettes, or the uh, silhouettes, curvature, I guess, because I keep the the cleft part dark. Okay. Oh, <laughs> two hundred models. Wow, that's a lot of models. I probably have a price limit now, but. Uh, it's probably a backlog of a couple of years. <laughs> I have a lot of King of Death models I have not touched. Because they're pretty models and, well, I don't want to ruin them. I don't want to rush them. So I mainly do them for, like, competitions and stuff like that. So I do, like, two or three a year, really. So why are you coming back into the hobby? You got free time now? You missing it? Okay, so this was the most recent, so I'm going to go back and just go to this guy, and he's the driest. Let's do a thicker coat on some more. A bit dry, but if we go like this and very parallel with the model, you can kind of like do like a very soft, like dry brush kind of effect. But it's not like a we don't have to use like a, a like a dry brush amount of paint because I prefer using like really thin, watery paint and dry brush. Because if, if you do dry brush, it kind of gives a weird texture, like a rough texture. I don't want rough texture in this, so if you do like a very steep angle, like basically flush with it. You can kind of do like a dry brush effect without having that weird rough texture that dry brush does. So, a neat little trick for you guys. It doesn't work on all things, but it works for a lot of things. <laughs> what kind of minis you got? Is it like from like all sorts, or do you actually have like a 
kind of brand you like the most? Ah, yes, they, they have some amazing models. I haven't played their games in years, but I've been painting their models for a long time, and they have some pretty beautiful models. Some are a bit annoying to paint. I just, I'm not a big fan of how they overlap a lot. Like, different overlapping pieces are hard to get into the inner parts, but they're still very beautiful models. I also hate painting models and pieces, so <laughs> a lot of junk models have the painting pieces. It's one of my weaknesses. Is it like a, from like an army for example? Do you, or you just have like a collection of uh, GW models you like? I wonder how much brighter I want to do this. This is me darkening quite a bit with uh, the inks, I think. So I want to go brighter, actually. But it's face nice and soft, which is what I want it to be. <laughs> That's cool. So are you, you painting this thing right now? While you're watching? Dust right there. I think I want to have dust on a, especially on a light surface. It really shows up. Okay. <laughs> yes. I always have a hard time parting with models I like. Though, I don't have a hard time parting with models I'd paint for commission, though. Which is good, I guess. Okay. I might have to go to the pure white actually and start doing these and that for brighten it up. So those 200 models from like one army, I guess, or for the most part one army or something else? Or just your favorite models from a whole bunch of armies? <laughs> That's cool. Cart. Is the cart with treasure on it, is it like uh, for D&D? &D? Or just like a, like a a terrain piece used for your games, for like Warhammer, for example. Okay. Oh, was it like the Paymaster guy? The big fat guy on it? He, he buffed your troops around because he give people money. I think that's he's a, I think that's it. But I could be horribly wrong. Anyway, all right, let's do. Uh, this is still wet, isn't it? It's some pure white. Cool. Yeah, I had a friend who played uh, Mercs a bit. He really liked them. They were oh, what are they called again? Not Cathay, it was... What was it called? The Mercenary Place. It was something... I forget. Ah, I can't remember. Basically, like, right above where the Skaven were. But nobody nobody knew that the Skaven were actually there. They were there the whole time, guys. The whole time. I 
just going to do the pure white in the most raised areas. Give it a bit more depth. And then I might do a bit of a shade. I don't know. I like it bright. Because I'm not darkening it a lot with the with the washes. A little too bubbly there, I had to blow it off. Oh, slowly walking off screen. It's a shame that they I don't think there's any more mercenary models for GW anymore. Like for the uh, Warhammer Fantasy Age of Sigmar. Not like the old mercenaries. I haven't really been paying attention to the, the new Age of Sigmar stuff. I was a big fan of the old rules of block and stuff, so I kind of lost interest once it changed over to more of a skirmish game. It might be mercenaries, but I don't really know. I think you just have like the eight, the good guys and the bad guys, and you, if you're playing good guys, you, they can, you can take whatever good guys you want. Same with the bad guys, etc, etc. From what I've heard about, anyway. Be more following the 40k kind of stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I had a big crowd of uh, Warhammer Fantasy, um, like block formations, and then when that got changed, a lot of the group just disappeared and started playing other things. I went to uh, War Machine. It's a great game. Small amount of models, great tight rules. And uh, local, uh, near locals. They're like a two hour drive away to get to uh, Seattle, where they're located. It's pretty great. So many layers of white. I should have started light lighter. Okay. Last coat I think of white. I'm just gonna try and block in the, uh, the details a bit more. Texture really. Before I go to a uh, shade. Exaggerate the ribbing on this a little bit. Hmm. 
I'm not a fan of layering too much because it's kind of like starts piling the paint too much and it gets too thick and starts destroying some detail. So be careful of that. When I do the shading, I'll do a very light coat of darker gray. Okay. Exaggerate some of these little freckles in the guy's tongue. Yes, the exact same thing. Because it was so unique, right? Like, what other game system had, like, blocks of, like, cool looking units face up against each other? It was a very unique system, right? And then they went to a way, to me, in my opinion, a way more generic kind of feeling game. They have great models. Like, like I love, like, all the new models that uh, they're putting out for Age of Sigmar, but the rules, the core rules, just felt like a. a a different version of 40k. I can see why they did it because you know 40k was a much more selling game, and you know, they made and Space Marines like sold more than all of Fantasy combined basically, and then they made Space Marines for, for uh, Fantasy, the Sigma Marine guys, whatever they're called. I don't like them, but I also don't like Space Marines, so I am not one of their. Um, the demographic, you might say, for those kind of models. Last one, last coat of white. And then I'll do a little bit of shading with some, with some other kind of blackish gray. Okay. Let's try this. Oops, my my palette was off grandma. Sorry about that. Just darker, not a little more. Let's try that. <laughs> Way too much overpainting. Double everywhere. Just make it thinner, much thinner. Very bad. It's fixed though, but I could have ruined it. Okay. Maybe let's get a better brush. This brush has got this brush is like ridiculous. It's got too much paint dried on. So let's go for a better brush from doing the because you kinda want a cleaner brush when you're doing too much blending. So like this one's not as not that great, but you know, still better than before. 
make sure it's make sure your your blending brush is cleanish and wet. Okay. So also make sure your the paint you're blending is very thin. I don't want to have it too much of a contrast. Because I'm gonna be doing a whole bunch of washes to to make it look more chaotic and warped. So I'm just doing very generic light. Okay. I also like to have like this whole area right here. I like to have one part that's thinner than the other one. So like I can some some when I'm doing two brush, some parts need to be thinner than others. Some pieces like to be thicker, right? If it's more detailed, I like to do it thinner. If it's very kind of like flat, I like to do it a little thicker. So I don't have to keep on thinning or, or thickening my paints. I can just go to one side or the other of that paint spot. <laughs> these brushes here, these are uh, two, three dollars from like a, a local art store each. So I don't really care about the expensive ones that a lot of people like to have. These last, the tips last quite a few months and then they just get related to like a, a dry brush or a base coat brush. I think I have, I bought one like fancy, like uh, Wins Newton. And I have like used it for like a week and I'm like, this is not, not that great. I know some people swear by expensive brushes, but a lot of, a few good painters also say it's not needed. Okay. Not finger paint a lot of this paint away because it's got the texture, right? Oops, so it just kind of retains itself in the crevices. There we go. There we go. But make sure it's no paint over here. I had a bit of over painting that dried and turned like a little bathtub effect. Don't do that. How you guys enjoying the music? We're just testing out, testing out this channel. If you guys don't like it, we can mix it up for another time. Let's see. Close to my next stage, which is the, all the washes. Many colorful washes. That'll be the fun stage. It's just a little monotonous with all the, the many shades of gray. Okay. Um, I'm probably gonna be doing uh, the washes and then I'll be done. I'll do all the details and all the touching up tomorrow. I know you're probably getting a little hungry, aren't you? Yeah. My moderator slash girlfriend and I are... I haven't had lunch yet, so... I might be finishing up sometime soon, but I kind of want to get the washes going. 
maybe not do all the washes, but just to show you guys what I mean by making it look a little more interesting. Just a lot of gray. I might do like one wash color, like a green or a, or a red or something. So I'll be doing a lot of experimentation with it, so. And I'm going to be doing a, a, just another session tomorrow on these bases. I don't know when, probably earlier in the morning, I think maybe around like 11 or 10 PST. So, it depends, but it depends on how I feel, right? I normally stream in the afternoons, like two or five, most of my streams are around five o'clock actually. So I'm just trying a two o'clock or a, sorry, 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock one tomorrow. See how well it does. Might be a little too early for me. Might be a bit grumpy, you never know. Okay. <laughs> Whoops, that must be not very nice sounding. Sorry about that, guys. All right. Sure, now this dark color. Oh my god, my, my fingers might have a little too much paint on them, so I might have to go wash them off right now because they're like so. My flesh is a little flexible, right? So when it's bonded to the skin, it hardens a bit, and then when I start flexing my fingers, it kind of comes off, and you get these little chunks of paint. So just give me a second. Sorry. A little better, not it's a little better, not not perfect, but majority of it's gone. Okay, gonna change up my water for a different cup. Okay, back to the grandstand. I might have added way too much water to my palette there in the one area. Hopefully I haven't ruined that batch paint. to your marble, it's not very good. Okay. 
No, this guy's got very little gray to it, so. Should be fast and easy to get onto the washes. Okay. This guy's just nothing but gray. Yeah, since it's a little too thin, it kind of pulls very easily. It's not very consistent. So. But I'll, I'll power through it, I guess. It's a thin coat anyway. To give it a bit more depth. Okay. There we go. That's kind of done. I'm calling it done. Alright, so let's get rid of. Okay, let's clean my brushes. And then let's get rid of the palette and get a new sheet of paper. And we're gonna do some washes, or at least one wash. Here we go. So, some more parchment paper. And then, what should we start with? Let's do a green. Because why not? It's a little unearthly to have green stone. But this is a very, very saturated green. I don't want it like this. So, I'm gonna start thinning it out. And desaturating it with some brown. But I'm gonna use a yellowy kind of brown. Let's see now where to go. It's a flesh wash. And it's called Caspian Flesh Wash. So it really tones it down. And I'm gonna add some mixing medium. I'm just gonna do a bunch of thin layers. As you can see, this is like ridiculously like peppermint green kind of, and then the brown really mutes it. I don't want it too striking. I want it to be more of a duller green. So I'm liking that so far. Let's see how it will do. Okay, let's clean my brush before I... And then I'm gonna try it on something. Let's try it on you. Nope, that is way too green still. This might be a little too much mixing medium. So let's just add a whole bunch more. Let's try a different area. Let's try the view. Do thin layers. Make sure there's a pool in some inappropriate areas. Yeah, it's hard for you guys to see, but it's got a bit of a green hue to it. I don't want to do too much. So I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna have to go back a bit and just deepen in some areas. But you kind of want it to pull in like the recesses, like the cracks and the little fleshy bits. I'll leave the tongue to be a, a pink color, so I'm not going to do any green on that. Oh, 
Oh, my gray was still not dried there fully, so let's gotta be careful of that. Very subtle, because I don't want it to be like ridiculous. Hmm, that sweet tasting uh <laughs> mixed medium. It's kind of disturbing how sweet it is. Whole bunch of just weird colors blended together. That's why I'm doing it so thin. Okay. And then let's make this section. And once I've done all like the uh, the rock and fleshy bits, I'm gonna go back and do the eyes and all the uh, arms and stuff like that. Um, give it a lot of character. But that's gonna be tomorrow though. Probably around ten or eleven PST. Trim off what I was talking about by the using inks. Ah, here we go. Let's do this part green. It's a little hard for you guys to see this, but it's a little more interesting. Okay. My camera's a little has a huge of a low like saturation levels. I think I put it so it's a little less saturation. It was looking weird before, but this is quite subtle. So I have to increase it for tomorrow. I'll also be posting pictures of this on my page, toad painting, and also Rain City Hobbies. Okay, let's actually do another color while waiting for the green to dry. So let's... I'm just gonna go straight Cossite, I think it is. Where did I have that one? Cossite Flesh Wash, which is kind of like a red... Yeah, it's something. There we go. It's a reddish brown, so... Let's see. I'm just gonna try straight, because a wash is quite thin compared to an ink, and that green was an ink. So that's why I had to really water it down. Well, let's just try straight cost site. I might have to add some mixed medium. Okay. Um. I think a, mix, a bit of mixed medium will definitely help. Let me just blend this better before I. Right, let's try some mixed medium in that. Just away from the pool of it. Let's try that. Let's try it on a different one. Alright, let's try it on you. Just gotta be careful. Not let it pool funny. Uh, yeah, I think it's a little better. Not much of a difference, but I think it pools a bit smoother in the recesses. What I want. Yeah, it's so subtle and just on the camera, isn't it? <laughs> Not really showing up that well. Oh well. I'm not, not mixing the green and the brown together right now, just because I don't want the, uh, the green to be fully dry before I start mixing colors in, so... They will not meet in this base. I don't like how it's turned out.
once I've done the brown, I'll go back to the green. And then um, after that, I'll go back to the brown again, then I'll probably be done. And I'll probably do a raid to somebody else. I have to figure that out. I'm gonna do these guys. Do the inner part of his mouth brown. Not too brown, obviously. Oh, and some gray parts here. It's gonna look weird because it's so bright. It's unfortunate. Let's do a tip of this guy's tongue. Reddish brown. Okay, let's go back to the green. Should be mostly green. I'm gonna some dark in some areas. Darken more of the recesses and it's also a bit too green, I think, so I'm gonna need some more of the brown to to give it more of a neutral tone. Okay. I like it much more neutral. It's way too like shamrocky. Hopefully it fixes it. Okay. Do a finger painting the roofs on the top layer. and the excess on the edges in the raised areas. Hmm. Make sure they're getting too chunky. I don't want it, there's gonna be a lot of colors in there, so I don't want it to be too clashy, so I make the colors maybe more neutral. Hence the browns. Okay. I'm gonna mix up the uh, cast paint because it's a little too warm. With some, sorry, caustite with some. I'm gonna mix up the caustite with some cast paint wash because it's a little. A little more neutral because the other stuff is really quite red. So this is a little more yellowy. Finger paint some other way. Hopefully tomorrow it'll all come together nicely. 
Once I do all the, uh, the rest of the flesh, the little washes. Some reds and blues and all that jazz. Make it look twisted. So you can kind of see why I wanted a light neutral color. So the washes kind of stay up. And then I might do some more washes along with the other colors. Like the bone and stuff. And then I'll have to do a bit more of other things. I don't want it to pool like that. It's funny. Because it would not be like a pool of saturation like that. In any kind of rock formation. Natural or otherwise. Make sure it pools. Or make sure it's very consistent, you might say. Oh. Okay. Taper off because we're doing another color into it. You want it to taper into each other. No hard edges, no hard gradients. How's that looking? I know it pulls too much on the edges, I'll have to clean that up later. But yeah, it's gonna be all a bunch of just different colors. Turning out okay. Not perfect, but definitely not bad. So I'm doing a whole bunch of like blues and yellows and other things, oranges. Make it look a little more interesting. Let's see. Here's one of my earlier ones. It's all dried up now. This one's, I might do a little more like washes of like just unearthly colors to make it kind of blend in with like this, right? But I think it turned out good. Let's see, here's the other one. There's the skull with the fingers coming out of the eye. Yeah. And these are kind of like the, the, the twin bases. Alright, so these are my uh, Demon World bases. They'll be on Rain Sea Hobbies once they're done, probably next week. These are the heroic versions. So these are like huge compared to like the normal standard bases. So like here's like a okay, and then compared to like a standard one, it's got a 32. Like so they're much. Alright. So you can see how big they are compared to the other ones. That's how tall they are. Let's compare it to a 32. There we go. Anyway. Um I think we have found somebody to raid. We're we'll be raiding Jack of Clubs. So thank you for watching and uh, hopefully see you guys tomorrow. Complete these bases. Alright, thank you so much. Have a good afternoon or night for probably a lot of people. Take care.